Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my 2023 Mock Reads Choice Awards TBR for Historical Fiction. <laughs> uh, so, the Mock Reads Choice Awards is something I made up, basically, uh, in response to the Goodreads Choice Awards. It's an attempt for me to read more front list. I am mostly a backlist reader, but I kind of thought it'd be fun to occasionally read more frontlist and uh, stay on top of uh, what's coming out now, uh, especially when it comes to buzzy titles uh, that might be up for contention in the Goodreads Choice Awards uh, that'll be coming up, you know, at the end of this year. Uh, but that being said, most of my taste uh, isn't all that buzzy. Uh, and this, the Mockridge Choice Awards is my way of choosing books I want to uh, read and then, you know, ranking them against each other in a blog post I'll be writing at the end of the year as well. So uh, basically, I have a variety of genres that I uh, want to read from for this uh, Mockridge <laughs> Choice Awards. Uh, Two of them I've already made TBR videos for this year. Um, one of them is literary slash general fiction, and one of them is uh, fantasy fiction. I'll link those down below. Uh, another one uh, is science fiction, and then historical fiction. You know, this one. And I also uh, want to read some YA science fiction and fantasy as well, although I'm a little... Uh, less certain. For all the other uh, genres this year, I quite easily uh, thought up at least four books, uh, most of which came out in the first half of the year that I went to read for this uh, TBR thing, but actually I'm having a little more trouble with uh, YA science fiction and fantasy, so I'm you know, putting that on the back burner for now. So I think I'll I might be, be reading more buzzy titles for that one uh, later in the year, but anyway, uh, this is about historical fiction, and I uh, quite easily found um, some books that really uh, spoke to me. I mean, really, the, the, the reality is that there's probably plenty more that would really uh, speak to me as well, but I'm going to highlight, well, technically uh, five books, but the truth is, is that uh, I'm only holding myself accountable for reading four, or maybe even three of them, uh, because uh, I only have four books for a couple of my other categories, so I'm kind of trying to make things even for reasons. Uh, I mean, this is all just in my, my head, so I could be very arbitrary and, you know, forget the sense of rules for this. Uh, but, you know, there's only so much time in a year <laughs> to read, so... Part of it is me just uh, trying to make sure I can actually get to some books and not uh, put too many on that I won't get to them all. But uh, here are five books, uh, and at least four of them will be contenders for my adult historical uh, fiction uh, picks. Uh, and I'm going to go chronologically uh, in terms of when they came out in 2023. And so I'm going to be starting with my January pick, which is Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan. Uh, Vivi Ganeshanathan, or Sugi, is a uh, podcaster I actually listen to on the fiction slash nonfiction podcast. Uh, although I, I say listen to, but actually I'm desperately behind on all of my podcast listening. That's another story. Uh, but this is her second novel that uh, has been published, and so I wanted to snatch it up and read it. Uh, it takes place in her native Sri Lanka. It's in the 1980s uh, during uh, civil war and unrest there, and uh, the main character's brothers get swept up into the violence. Uh, and so that is uh, what this book will be chronicling. Uh, and I put this book on my most anticipated reads list uh, that I, a video I made back in January. But I do feel like out of all the five books I'm going to talk about, this might be the one I actually let go of and maybe won't read this year after all. Uh, in part because uh, another book from my anticipated reads list from January, Sam, I also justified in my uh, literary general fiction list uh, taking that off. <laughs> and so... Again, I'm making arbitrary rules for myself, and I thought, well, if I'm not going to read one, maybe I won't read the other, and maybe, even though I've actually had these out from the library for months now, I might actually not read them this year, but, you know, the crazy thing is, with the DC Public Library, uh, I get to extend my hold for a long, long time, so long as nobody else wants these books, so... <laughs> 
uh, for the time being, I still have them out from the library, but I kind of think I'm not going to get to them this year. <laughs> Here is a book that will definitely be a contender for my historical fiction uh, reads that I will be getting to this year. No ifs, ands, or buts. It came out in February, and it is The Secrets of Heartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden, because Katie is a fellow booktuber who... Uh, book tubes about all things Victorian literature and other literature over at Books and Things. So I certainly couldn't let this one uh, pass me by, even though uh, it is months later and I have not yet read it, even though I do in fact own the book. <laughs> but um, I definitely will be reading it sometime before the end of 2023 and considering it for this uh, category. This book uh, takes place in Victorian England. Uh, unsurprisingly, given uh, Katie's uh, realm of interest and uh, her education about these matters, it's a, a gothic novel about um, a governess who comes to uh, a mysterious home. Uh, and so I think it has it has a lot of vibes of uh, the Bronte sisters is how she marketed it. So already uh, it uh, seems right up my alley. I haven't actually done the thing where I look on booktube where of course a bunch of other booktubers have read and reviewed and so forth this book, but I don't want to spoil myself too much because I want to, you know, keep my own mind fresh uh, and I will be getting to this, I promise. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about came out in March. It's called Once We Were Home by Jennifer Rosner. And it's kind of sort of a Holocaust novel, except not really. It takes place, I believe, in the 1960s uh, in Israel, where uh, a bunch of stories converge uh, of characters who were children during the Holocaust. And most of these children were uh, somehow stolen away, quote unquote, and that is how they survived. Uh, and they all have a bunch of trauma about that. I think Rosner uses the term a little loosely. Uh, some were stolen away as in, uh, you know, they were given to the care of the church who then tried to keep them from their families after the war. Some were given to neighbors and then when their families came to pick them up, they had, you know, differing opinions about, you know, returning to their, you know, Jewish roots. And then I believe one uh, woman, uh, her mother spirited her out of the country and hid their Jewish heritage, and she found it out on her own. And my understanding is these characters will meet up in various ways in Israel and contend with uh, their histories and their realities. So it's kind of exciting for me because it's Holocaust fiction, but it's really about the aftermath and the trauma, and it's really, but also, you know, the main story uh, also is in the past as well by that point, and we'll be looking at the 1960s. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this one. The next book came out in April, and in fact, I'll be reading it imminently. Uh, I have it out on audio from my library, and it is called Cantica by Elizabeth Graver. Uh, and I heard about this book, I think most recently from the Jewish Book Council. It is a, a sprawling family history about a Sephardic Jewish uh, family. Uh, the Sephardi Jews uh, have um, some origins uh, in uh, Spain up through the Inquisition until uh, the Jews were kicked out of the country. Uh, and uh, this is a multi-generational story, and I believe it's at least loosely based on uh, the uh, author's own family, uh, and uh, takes place uh, in early 20th century Istanbul, where the family had been living for uh, several generations relatively well, but now um, some anti-Semitism has reared its head in the country and they find themselves displaced again. That's my understanding of the story. Uh, I feel like this has uh, gotten buzz or maybe it's just that the Jewish Book Council has hyped it up a little bit. Uh, I'm a little wary because uh, it is based on personal history and sometimes, you know, those lines between fact and fiction don't always work so well for a story. But uh, it's really fertile ground. I feel like, you know, the Sephardi community is uh, not as well represented in Jewish literature, especially in the U.S., where uh, most uh, of the community is Ashkenazi and have their roots in Eastern Europe uh, after the diaspora. Uh, and I love the cover, and uh, I am excited to get to this. This is definitely one I will be reading this year, because I will... Uh, be reading and reviewing and talking about it very soon. 
And the last book I have to talk about should be coming out today, provided I get this uh, video out in time. <laughs> the book is Loot by Tanya James, uh, and it is historical fiction that takes place uh, in 18th century India, and it is commentary on colonialism. I actually read another one of Tanya James's uh, novels called Atlas of Unknowns a couple of years ago. So that's, I think, how I first found out about uh, this new book is through Goodreads telling me, hey, you know, one of your previous authors you've read is coming out with something. Uh, and uh, yeah, I thought this sounded pretty intriguing. Uh, I definitely wanted to move to, you know, a new and diverse location that I definitely don't read as much about. Uh, and uh, the only thing that gives me a little pause, perhaps, is uh, I think there's going to be a fabulous element when it comes to, you know, the tiger on this cover. Uh, it's not straight up realist fiction. Uh, and I'm not always, you know, uh, the biggest fan of the melding of those uh, genres like that. Uh, but uh, I can't help but uh, really continue to be intrigued uh, about how I believe this uh, plot goes about about a teenage uh, woodcarver who uh, is uh, drawn into service to create um, a commemoration of this tiger. And he starts out in India and then he in fact uh, moves uh, to Europe. Uh, and I think there yeah, will be a lot of commentary on colonialism in here and uh, it will be very intriguing, I believe. The author, in fact, uh, you know, the book is coming out now, and the author will be uh, at my one of my local bookstores, Politics and Prose in D.C., in the next couple of days to talk about the book. But alas, I'm not sure I could get there. It kind of, you know, messes with my usual schedule. It probably, the, the talk will go online sooner or later, but uh, it would have been cool to see her in person and to hear her talk more about her book. And I might be reading it this year for Mock Reads. We shall see. So that about covers it for me now. I will leave the Goodreads uh, links for all of the books I mentioned uh, in historical fiction linked down below. I'm very excited to finally be getting to reading some of these books and uh, organizing, you know, my thoughts on some front lists so that I can make my own mock reads post and uh, maybe vote for some of these in the Goodreads Choice Awards. You know, who doesn't love a good popularity contest, really? <laughs> I find it fun, even though obviously you have to take all of this with a grain of salt. <laughs> anyway, I should be back on this channel in the next couple of days to do my monthly author's answer video where I answer um, one in a series of questions about being a writer from uh, author tuber J.D. Archer and his writing group, so stay tuned for that. I hope you are all enjoying whatever you are reading, be it front list or back list. If you uh, have any thoughts about these uh, new and buzzy titles, I'd love to hear about them. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.